Well, let's bring in Philippe Leclerc, who's the representative for the UN Refugee Agency in Turkey. And he's joining us from Ankara. Philippe Leclerc, thank you very much for being with us here on TRT World. So first on um, World Refugee Day, do you think that enough has been done to support Turkey in its care for the millions of Syrian refugees living here? Actually not. I think uh, Turkey continues to be a leading example of responsibility, hosting now for more than 10 years up to 4 million refugees, 3.7 million Syrians in particular, but also from other nationalities. And we need more uh, responsibility sharing from other countries, particularly at a time of COVID, which has uh, consequences on both the refugees and the hosting communities. So our Advocacy is for industrialized countries in particular to continue and increase their assistance to Turkey as a host country. And of course, there are many refugee crises all around the world. And as you mentioned, of course, we've gone through 15 months of pandemic. But what's being done to make sure that nations adhere to international law and protect those fleeing violence and persecution? Well, as you have showed, the number of refugees and, and forcibly displaced people if within their countries has been rising for the 12 last years, including when many countries are actually uh, restricting access to their countries. So we need the international law to be uh, respected so that those in need of flight uh, continue to have access to protection. And again, uh, the example that Turkey is providing is important. All over the world, we see people in need of international protection. In, in Turkey, we see that the refugees, like the citizens, have access to vaccination. They are included in national programs with access to health, access to employment. This is what is required for uh, refugees to continue to have hope either to, to return to their country of origin when conditions are safe and dignified, or to contribute, as they do in Turkey, to the place hosting them through education, acquisition of skills, employment. They contribute, as we have seen in COVID-19 times, as nurses, as medical doctors, as cleaners. They contribute to the wealth of the society hosting them. But for that, we need countries to provide these conditions and law enabling them to contribute. This is what we hope states will continue to do on the basis of the, pro the example provided by Turkey. Absolutely. And as you uh, rightly point out, there is an, a good example being set by uh, Turkish authorities looking after refugees. But uh, it brings to mind what's happening with Rohingya in Myanmar. Of course, there's been a coup there, so uh, events have changed. But the treatment of the Rohingya by governments in that region has been despicable. What's being done to make sure that governments in Asia look after refugees in those nations? Well, the first thing, as you have said, is that human rights are respected so that uh, the one million uh, displaced Rohingya who had to flee their country, who are not recognized as citizens uh, in uh, Myanmar, when these basic conditions exist, it is not possible for them to remain in the country and they have to flee the violence. But for that, Bangladesh, which is a, a low-income country, is, needs to be assisted so that the one million people who are there for the time uh, that is needed, are supported so that at one stage they can continue uh, having the hope of returning to their country with the rights attached to it, being full citizens of Myanmar. In the meantime, we need to help Bangladesh in the best way possible so that the youth has access to education and be part of the future of either Myanmar or Bangladesh. Absolutely. OK, uh, Philippe Leclerc, we'll have to leave it there. Philippe Leclerc from the UN Refugee Agency, thank you very much for your time, sir, and good luck in all your work.